Hey friends, welcome back to my garden. My name is Becky and this is Acre Homestead and today we are gonna be doing a massive harvest. If you can see right there, that is my Asian pear tree. Here's my Bartlett pear tree. I've got my apple tree that's ready to be harvested and a whole bunch of stuff in the garden that needs to be harvested. We have peppers and tomatoes and carrots and spinach and all the things. And so today what we're gonna do is we are just gonna take some time, it's probably gonna be a couple hours, of getting all this fruit off the trees into the house so that we can process them. This is what we work all year for is this time of year where we get to just harvest and harvest and harvest and I absolutely love this season. It can be a little overwhelming sometimes but it's super fun. So let's just get right into it. The first thing we're going to do is start harvesting these apples and pear trees and let's see how much we get. I definitely know that this year I have a way bigger harvest than I did last year and so I'm super excited about that. Someone enjoyed this Asian pear. So this one will go to the chickens. That's hilarious. <laughs> They're just absolutely stunning. We got our first tree completely picked this year, which is amazing. This entire wheelbarrow is almost full, which is way more fruit than I thought I was gonna get. And now what I'm doing is I'm looking through all the fruit on the ground, and if a fruit just has one little spot on it, I'm gonna put it in the bucket and I'll bring it in. <clears throat> but if there's a decent sized rotten spot like this where it's really soft, I'm gonna put it in the silver bowl and we're gonna give it to the chickens. I had a lot of fruit fall while I was picking and that's why I want to make sure I look through it all to make sure that we save any food that is good for us to eat. So this is for us, this is going to the chickens. Now we're gonna go on to the Bartlett pears and these you can harvest actually while they're still green and I'll have them ripen inside. As I'm picking these pears, look what I found. Looks like they already hatched out and are all gone, but that's kind of cool. I'm absolutely thrilled with this harvest. It is stunning. Look how perfect this pear is. These pears are way prettier than they were last year. Last year I had kind of like a, a fungal, it was called like something rust, and it kind of blemished the fruit. Now these are still green. I picked them a little bit green because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have these ripen inside and then we'll get to preserving them a different day. But before we bring this beautiful wheelbarrow full of fruit inside, we are gonna go harvest carrots and peppers now. In this bed here is just a menagerie of things. It's mostly my pepper bed. In between all my peppers, I planted basil. This is basil. I planted carrots and we have echinacea, nasturtiums down there. I have zinnias and calendula. But what I wanna get out of here today is the peppers and carrots. I planted bolero carrots around all my pepper plants and they definitely are ready to harvest. Look at the size of this. And it's actually starting to rain out here, which is crazy because we've been in a drought. It's only rained like two days since March. Oop, that carrot didn't come up. Oh, wow. Look at the size of this. These are definitely the biggest carrots I've ever grown. I love picking root crops 
they are like digging for treasure. There are definitely weeds in here too, but you can see how I've just got carrots kind of in between all these pepper plants. It's gonna make this look a lot more organized once I dig all these carrots up. Oh, we got a purple one. Whoa, look at the size of this one. Now I probably could have harvested these a week or two earlier because they're starting to grow these side roots, but they're still perfectly good to eat. These are Bolero carrots. I bought these carrots from Johnny Seeds. This was a complete experiment to me to try to grow carrots around my pepper plants. And I actually harvested, when I did that last garden tour, about this many carrots from the same bed. And I am so thrilled with the results on this. I'm gonna be growing carrots around my pepper plants from here on out. I planted the seeds the same day I planted the pepper plants. And these are basically free carrots that I wouldn't have gotten in this growing space if I hadn't planted them. So I'm thrilled with this harvest. Let's talk about this carrot bed. I wanna go ahead and get this carrot bed harvested. I planted this back in April and these carrots should have been picked a long time ago, but they never seem to grow and I think they're ready to go now. This was kind of a weird bed because what I did is I planted it, I covered it with cardboard because I was going out of town and I wasn't gonna be able to water it and I hadn't turned my irrigation system on yet. And when I got home, I took the cardboard off and there had been a bunch of like animal critter tracks in it. I thought all the seed had been eaten, so I replanted it. And like two days later, a ton of carrots sprouted. So then I had very heavy planting of carrots in this bed. So I really don't know what's going on in this bed. I also have a ton of volunteer tomatoes in here that I've kind of, you can't even see them really because they're just laying, like this is the tomato plant. They're just laying throughout here. So I'm curious to see what I'm gonna get out of this bed. So let's just start. There's a ton of weeds in here too. It looks like there's a bunch of trees or something growing in here. So it's kind of a mess. So let's just see together what I get out of it. I don't know why, but I feel like starting to harvest right in the middle here. So I am just gonna, oh, I can feel a carrot in here. Well, it didn't come up. Well, I broke it. There we go. Those are halfway decent. Not too shabby. Definitely not as big as the other ones. Probably because they're, I didn't thin them and they're way closer together. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, there's definitely small. Those are actually pretty decent size. This here is where my tomato plant is, so I'm not gonna, gonna try to keep it in the ground. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the carrots and de-stemming them from the carrot tops so that I can wash them out here instead of bringing all this inside and having to deal with it inside. I'm gonna try to get them as clean out here before bringing them inside so we can just kind of reduce the mess. We did get some pretty big sized carrots actually out of here. I'm pretty happy with, so that's pretty good. There definitely are more small carrots, but I have a plan for them when I go inside and deal with all of this. I think I'm gonna make a quick pickle with them and I'll just do a refrigerator pickle and it actually tastes really good on tacos. Car this is the potato bed. I'm just gonna throw these carrot tops on here and they're gonna compost in place. 
think I forgot some carrots. Update on the bunnies. This is the bed right here where the bunnies were living and I dug them up when I was digging my potatoes. So if you wanna watch that video, I'll link it up here and down in the description box below. The bunnies were living in this bed for about two weeks after I harvested the potatoes. And then I went to Montana and when I came back, they were gone. And so many of you guys reassured me that bunnies are really resilient and they will actually move their bunnies the mama bunny will move the baby bunnies if they feel threatened. So I'm assuming that mama bunny moved baby bunnies and all is well in the world. Thank you guys so much for all your support when it comes to these bunnies. I learned a ton about rabbits and I'm glad that we're all on the same page that we want to support the ecosystem. And if we have bunnies living in our garden, then so be it. So I just harvested a bunch more carrots from another area. I thought I had hit record, but I didn't. But look at the size of these. These are stunning carrots. These I planted later. I definitely have better luck with carrots when I don't plant them so early. These carrot tops are gonna go to the chickens. So I'm super happy with the turnout of those carrots. And they're basically got a really good clean before I have to bring them inside to process them to preserve for storage. I'm getting ready to harvest the peppers and there's a visitor. Hi, sweetheart. I can't pet her because, or him, because I am highly allergic to kitties. Oh, I would love to pet you, but I cannot. I'm gonna harvest peppers. All right, guys, we are gonna harvest peppers now and I can't wait. Can you see that red in there? Those are cayenne peppers. So first I have some bell peppers here. Wow. My calendula was kind of done and then I had some Thai basil that had gone to seed and it was causing too much shade for these peppers down here. So I decided to go ahead and just pull them up and that will allow more sun on these peppers for the last bit of summer. I'm gonna take these plants that I just pulled up and put them on the old potato bed. These are my Dollar Tree onions that I planted for green onions. And do you see how big the actual bulbs are? They are telling me they're ready to harvest. So all along my pepper bed, I planted these green onions that I started from seed that I bought at the Dollar Tree. And they started to bulb up. So I figured I'm just gonna leave them in the ground and see what happens. And look how big some of these Dollar Tree onions got. I'm thoroughly impressed, quite honestly, some of these green onion Dollar Tree seeds that were 25 cents because you get four seed packets for a dollar at Dollar Tree are bigger than some of those onions that I grew for bulb onions. So I am thrilled with this experiment. Now I'm assuming that these bulbs are going to have zero shelf life and so I am going to process them and do something with them so that they don't just rot because they don't have much paper around them to dry and keep them kind of like shelf stable. But I'm super happy with this harvest.
now I'm gonna move to my other pepper bed where I mostly have bell peppers, I think. The next thing I'm gonna harvest are my onion seeds. They are dry, oh my gosh. So the seeds are already falling. There was a bug. The seeds are already falling into my hand. So I brought out a clear container here, or a glass container, it doesn't really matter. And this is my onion bulb that flowered. And all I'm doing is putting the flower and kind of releasing the seeds. I think I'm gonna cut that whole bulb off. These were flowers and, oh, see, I'm already releasing the seeds, which I don't wanna do. And you know they're ready because they've completely dried. Can you see all those seeds coming out? You can see the difference on this one. This one hasn't opened all the way. There are some that are opened and dry. So I'm just gonna put this in the container and let it completely dry out. And then when they open, I'll collect the seeds from it. So while I'm right here harvesting those onion seeds, I'm gonna go ahead and harvest a bunch of kale. Ugh, this kale has aphids on it, which is gross. Which is fine, I just need to go inside and wash them off. I am so proud of this tomato plant. Look at all these tomatoes on it. I just cut these off. This is a tomato plant that I had saved seed from last year. It was some hybrid. I don't know exactly what it was. And all I did was cut the tomato, squish the seeds onto a paper towel and let it dry. And look at what I have. Free tomatoes, basically. They're, I don't know, some mixture of something. They're a yellow variety. They're some weird hybrid. But for free, I grew these. and. This tomato plant is strong. It's got a ton of green fruit on it. And I'm just super happy with how well it's doing. While I'm right here, I'm gonna harvest some of this green leaf kale here. you've been around here for any length of time, you know this plum tree has kind of given me some grief and I'm worried that it's not gonna survive. But I am so grateful that it is actually producing fruit that is ripe. They're probably half the size that they were last year, so there's gonna be very little fruit on these because there is a pit in there. But I wanna make sure that I get this harvest because I'm worried this is gonna be the last year this tree is gonna produce anything so I don't want it to go to waste. There's so much fruit on here. Mm. They do taste good. For 
how much issues I've had with this plum tree this year. There's no bug damage or anything to them. They may be small, but they are perfect. Look at the bounty. All right, friends, this by far is my largest harvest. I was just trying to take a thumbnail, so I was holding this bowl, and this bowl probably weighs like 40 pounds, so I'm a little out of breath, but I am thrilled with this. This is all the Asian pears, Bartlett pears. We have a ton of plums. I sure hope this isn't the last plums I'm ever gonna get from this tree. A huge, huge bowl of peppers with a bunch of peppers scattered in here. We have some eggs, some kale, all these beautiful tomatoes and tomatillos and carrots. And then we have those onion seeds as well. I just got the call that my Azure order is here, so I need to run. I'm just gonna wheelbarrow this wheelbarrow into my kitchen, and then I will process it tomorrow. I've got a lot of processing to do. We are gonna make plum sauce. We are gonna can pears. We are going to make tons of stuff with the tomatoes. We have to process our carrots. And there is just a lot of stuff to do. And I am super excited, super sweaty, but beyond blessed. I hope you guys are having a great day. Thank you so much for spending time in my garden with me. I don't take that for granted that each one of you would take time out of your day to spend time with me. We have a ton of fun things that are gonna be happening with this stuff. If you're new, go ahead and consider subscribing so you can follow along. Or if you wanna watch some of my other videos, they'll pop up right here. I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope your guys' gardens are abundant. And I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.